There is something about St. Stephen's in the papers today. Can you tell me what it is? Yes, sir. So, a uh, hundred something, some students were suspended. Uh, their admit card was uh, not released because they had short attendance in the morning assembly. And why was their attendance short? Because no one likes the morning assembly. It's like very early in the morning and then you have to sit there and listen to the mm -hmm. sermon. So, probably that's why. Yeah, but it's also being given a religious twist. Um, sir, I would say in the morning assembly, when they have the sermons, they usually take a quotation from either Gita or Quran or from the Holy Bible. So I think uh, it is almost secular. So that would be wrong to say that it is something religious. It is more of. But do you think the Bible is holy and the Bhagavad Gita and Quran are not holy? So every every book is. Holy. When you said Bhagavad Gita, Quran, and the Holy Bible. I, will, I have this, uh, you know, urge to ask you whether the other two are not as holy as the Bible. So all of them are equally holy, sir. That was a slip of tongue. And you did not have equality. What would happen? He's, he asked people. And he says, you have equality but no liberty. What would happen? So it is necessary to have all of them together. Are you able to see something in that, uh, for in what Mr. Ambedkar said? Yes, sir. So he was uh, talking that all liberty, equality, and fraternity is needed in India. So without either either without liberty or so equality. Let's take two of them: liberty and equality. What would happen if society had liberty and no equality? And what would happen if society had equality and no liberty? Just look at these two. Think about it and tell me. It's not easy to decipher. So if society only has liberty and no equality, it would result in tyranny of the few. Mm. And likewise, if there is no liberty and equality, it, all, it would also result in the tyranny of the few. So suppose you have equality and mm. no liberty, what would happen? So it would result in a dictatorship in a dystopian world. No, it would not result in dictatorship. You would have no incentive to function, to, to contribute. Right, so that because if you had equality and everybody got the same thing irrespective of what he did, there will be no respect for merit. The liberty is not there to show your merit. You can only do what you are told to do. And that would mean that you will not contribute. There will just be equality. So, uh, exactly what happened in the system in Russia. Exactly, exactly. So, these were the uh, perils to which Dr. Ambedkar uh, aroused the people of India. Now, uh, let's look at the subject which you have taken for the civil services. What was your optional subject for the civil services? Political science and international, international relations. Now, that's a, a very special subject because uh, international relations can cover the whole world. So, there is something called the Raizina dialogue going on. Can you tell me about the Raizina dialogue? Yes, sir. So, it is a dialogue that happens in India. Uh, it is conducted by the ORF, the Observer Research Foundation. It is an uh, it is a think tank that is also associated with the MEA. So it is basically modeled on the Shangri-La dialogues that used to take place. So many people, different leaders and different security experts from all over the all over the country come to India and they share their views. So who has come to India this time? Somebody hmm. very important has come. So I'm not aware about it. I'm Somebody from it. Greece, Greece, right? Are you able to take the hint? Somebody from Greece has come. No, sir. The Prime Minister was there along with the Greek Prime Minister. Right, sir. Now, do you think India and uh, Greece, Prime Minister has made a, a mention about Greece. Are you able to recall that uh, statement he made recently? No, sir. It was in the papers a couple of days back. No, sir. I am not able to recall that. Okay. He looks upon uh, uh, Greece as a kind of gateway to Europe. Yes, sir. Was it at one time the gateway to Europe and if so, why did Greece lose that position? So I think uh, it was more to do with the decline of their civilization, the rise of other civilization like the Ottomans, and then it was it the base it, in that that region, the Mediterranean region, basically became that the lake of the Ottoman Empire, and then they have to devise another route through the Cape of Good Hope around Africa. So I think that was the main reason that led to decline of Greece. So when did the uh, capture of Constantinople take place? So uh, so, as far as I can remember, I think it was in the 1500s or 1600s, some, some, some... You are not aware of the exact date? No, sir. When did Vasco da Gama come to India? Some very bad with the dates. It was 1750s, something. 1750s? That is when the British were already here. 
Okay. Oh, oh, I'm extremely sorry, sir. I'm not able to recall right now. When was the Battle of Plassey fought with Robert Clive? Battle of Plassey. Leading the British. That that was in 1757. Uh, so right. how could Vasco da Gama have come right, at the sir. same time? Right, sir. I messed up the Extremely sorry about when this. When did Goa become independent? Rather uh, become part of India, become independent of Portuguese rule, and then become part of India. It was in 1961. Then why was it not, you know, merged with India in 1947? Sir, because the Portuguese uh, didn't leave India at that time, so they were holding on to that uh, colony of the of the Goan colony, and then they had also said that it is our territory, we won't be leaving it like that. So even India sent in many peace missions, but they didn't respond to it. Then India had to take a police action get it free. You, where do you think there is the maximum number of Catholic Christians in the world? Which country has the maximum number of Catholic Christians? Okay. Are you aware of uh, Brazil and Portugal uh, where they are located in the world? Brazil is in the South America and Portugal is in the Iberian Peninsula in Europe. And uh, how did uh, the, how did the, you have the Spanish civilization? You have the Spanish culture in Brazil. How could you have Spanish culture in Brazil? Spanish culture in Brazil. So it was colonized by the Spain. So because of the sugar plantations and slave trades, so that is why the culture then went from Spain to Brazil. Slave trade? Are you sure the slave trade was happening between Spain and Brazil, or was it? colonization or was it a combination of both? So it was more of a colonization, it was more to do with the sugar plantations and in the sugar plantations the slaves were used as workers because the natives couldn't withstand that much amount of opprobrium. Which natives? Uh, the, the South African, uh, the South uh, South American natives. So the slaves came from where? Mm, slaves, I think so. So they primarily came from Africa. But sugar plantations are already there, as you say. Then why do they need slaves? They are already raising the sugar plantations there. They don't need uh, more labor to, you know, cultivate sugar, sugar cane. So I think uh, uh, when the when the colonization took place, uh, the sugar plant the sugar plantation as it was done, it was more done, done more on an industrial scale, and that required a uh, hard labor force. And that is why the, uh, the slave labor was... Are you sure about this or are you just a guesswork? Sir, I'm not 100% sure but as far as I think... Are I you not aware that they went in search of India and found uh, South yes, Africa? Sir, yes sir. Then they how did. could they have gone in search of sugar? They went in search of India and found South Africa. They didn't go in search of uh, sugar. No sir, they did. Yes sir, exactly. Right. So then it, it changes the whole complexion of uh, hmm. your argument. Sir, what I meant was that it was the primary re the primary reason. After that, they discovered uh, the South Africans. They used to grow sugar there, so that is why the. Okay. Let's come to sugar cane. Uh, government has announced an increase in sugar cane prices, the fair and remunerative price. What is the price they have announced for sugar cane? I'm not aware about that. Extremely sorry, sir. I couldn't satisfy. No, you with the no, you, you will, I will not say you are not satisfied. That I will give you as a feedback at the end. Don't worry. Do your interview peacefully. Okay, Anshu, on international relations itself, like you take four countries, neighboring countries, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Maldives, and Pakistan. Some of them are very easy, like the equation is very clear, and some of them have changed over the years. Because another player with these countries is obviously China. So, how they have, like with India, Sri Lanka had a very good relation at one point of time. It deteriorated very much. And then again, India went to help. And China was one player in that. So, you can take the course of this and explain the reason you know, how and how, what is the equation now as on date. Similarly, Bangladesh and Maldives and Pakistan. Maldives and Pakistan are very easy, but they are again in a flux, at least Maldives. So, please explain just in two minutes. So, 
Sir, regarding Maldives, we have had a love-hate relationship first uh, with every regime change. With every change of the government, we have seen that uh, uh, some of them were pro-India and some of them were against India. Some of them followed the India first, some of them went with the Chinese first. And as we see that they have the largest trade relations with the China and there's a huge amount of investment by the Chinese that I have done in the Maldives. So probably that is one reason and uh, the, uh, the Maldivian islands, they also act as a strategic area in that region. And so similarly with the Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka. So as we have seen that China has been pumping in money in the Sri Lankan island. And they, it is also said, uh, even in fact, Bhama Chalani was one strategic expert, he coined this term, the checkbook diplomacy. He said that what China is doing, China is also using this checkbook diplomacy and they are also buying the elites, the political elites of the governments. So, sir, that is another reason. And then what we saw after uh, the Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan government uh, could not repay their debt to the IMF, then India went in and helped them. And in fact, even now, after there was crisis in the agriculture, India sent in food and fertilizers and whatnot. And so similarly with Bangladesh, I think with Bangladesh, Bangladesh since since we are very near, and with the coming of Sheikh Hasina, I think relations have significantly improved. But there is another China factor in there. And with Pakistan, we have seen the China is building CPEC. We have the Shakstam Valley issue with them. So I think why China is doing is uh, China wants to uh, curtail India's rice. Because as they say, there cannot be two tigers on one mountain. So India, so China sees itself as the only tiger on the only mountain that is Asia. So that is why China. China is now it is fine. Now quickly on Africa. Africa, it is a very subdued continent basically. But two main players are against China and India. In what way? What is their strategy? Because Africa obviously is very close to India, as on, uh, like country-wise also. Plus continent wise, uh, you may be knowing G20 uh, there. So, how is it like what is the strategy of China for what reason and what is the strategy of India? Sir, India has been focusing more on the soft power issue and if we see the historical relations, we were we were talking about anti-colonization and anti-apartheid but as we saw what happened in 1962, none of the African states supported us, right? So India focuses more on high impact and high visibility projects like we are making hospitals, we are making houses for the people, we are investing in agriculture, we are giving them technology, we, we are giving them scholarships. Whereas what China is doing, China is focusing on hard power, they are getting military bases there that they recently had in Djibouti. Then what they are doing, they are pumping in money to create stadiums, big buildings, big roads, uh, big railway lines that they are doing in Mombasa or in the Ivory Coast. They have made those. This is being done uh, like gratis or on loan? Right, sir, exactly. Is it Under the BRI in, yeah, BRI in yeah, Belt and Road Initiative of China. Okay. So, like, it is, is it backfiring or African countries are very close, pally with China also? So, what is the situation? Sir, but if we look at the economic dimensions, we will see that the Chinese government, the African nations, they are getting under debt because of those unsubstantial projects. They are, they are more like the white elephants. They are high visible, they are highly visible, but they do not serve a purpose. They do not create that sort of economic, that, that sort of economic remuneration for the African countries. What, what is happening, China has to say, according to some strategic experts, that they have bought the political elite. So they are also investing in the infrastructure, they are also investing in the political elite. So that is why that situation has evolved in Africa. Okay, yeah, that is well caught, well observed, because there, everywhere, one of their main strategies is to purchase the political right. elite. You know? If the power, uh, those politicians in power are not agreeing, then opposition. So that is across the globe, that is there. So we can stop at this point. Thank you. Uh, so, since you are from Uttarakhand, uh, I would like to know the influx of uh, massive pilgrims into uh, Uttarakhand and uh, construction of in many infrastructure projects, would it uh, damage the fragile ecosystem of Uttarakhand? Sir, there is indeed a kernel of truth in this, but sir, to cite an important incident, I would say the first Victoria Crossy of India, Mr. Darban Singh Negi, when he was asked for a reward by King George, he said that I want a railway line to be built. 
from Rishikesh to Kantreya to say that to deny infra these infrastructure projects by citing environmental degradation, I think that would do not do good to a humble Pahadi because everyone deserves road, everyone deserves a railway line, hospitals and schools. That is the thing. But sir, we need to make sure that these things do not create a very adverse impact. So what we have recently done, like the NGT has issued guidelines, if you are making a tunnel or you are doing a road, do not blast it, use a tunnel boring machine. And sir, with regard to tourism, I think we can do much more better in tourism. Uh, what we are seeing some uh, 45, 50 lakhs tourists visited the Chardam. Uh, so what we can do, we can, every one of us know about Chardam, but few of us know about Panch Badris, Panch Kedars, or other temples or other unexplored places of Uttarakhand. So if we could direct that excess tourism to other, other places, that would be great. Study of political science, how long it can help the better public administration? Study of many theories. Um, public administration, sir, to be specific. Yeah. So I think it would help them immensely. Because, sir, if we see even the classic epics like uh, the, cla the classic text like the Arthi Shastra, they talk about how to do public administration, how to stop corruption, how to have a good administration. So, all of that is written in that, and that is all coming back to us. So, if we could. Would you, how would you implement as an officer? Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, uh, with regard to public policy or everything? Public policy. Okay. So, sir, I would see that uh, no cliques are formed. So, what happens, especially in some administrative offices or even in corporates, so there are little, little cliques that are formed and then they uh, indulge in rent seeking behavior or in their own gratification. So, I'll make sure that no such cliques are formed. There are regular transfers. And even if someone is getting transferred to some places, I'll see that it is being according to the rules. Because what happens, some people are transferred to good places, some people are only transferred to bad places. Then there is that uh, we can do some reforms in the, uh, the report. So, uh, share of uh, agriculture in our GDP is less than other sectors, but it can become a dominant sector to improve the share as well as employment generation, rural development. Are, are you? What are your comments? Yes, sir. I totally agree with you, sir. Because sir, as we seen from the historical times, we see that there has been greater agricultural subsidies, but there have been very less investment in agriculture. Even uh, Dr. Subramanian Tommy in one of his books has written about this in detail. So there is very little investment in agriculture. If we could shift that subsidies towards investment in agriculture, we could do investment in horticulture, be it livestock, in fisheries, in other, con in, in other sectors and, and uh, link it with the food processing sectors. So I think it would uh, do us immense benefit. And so with that, I think uh, we can open up the agriculture sector to private market and to the uh, to the, what would they say and unleash the animal energies in the agriculture market so that would be great okay you want to ask one question yeah there is one question that because you are from Chauta 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 Chauta. Chauta. yeah word of Haldwani now there are two aspects of the problem actually there was some encroachment and construction on that and this was going on for a long time and uh, then high court supreme court everything happened and it was in a routine way that that demolition was being taken up. But on the other hand, simultaneous development of UCC <coughs> implementation and all. And these two were linked. Now, how they were linked in the first place? And what is actually there is a lot of undercurrent or problem against UCC. So can you explain? Because you belong to truck and perhaps with the knowing better internal story. So sir, I have lived in Nenital district for a year and a half. So yeah. sir, I think uh, there was some... Haldwani is gateway to Nenital. Right, sir. Right. Yeah. Right. So sir, uh, there have been certain incidents also. So there was some encroachment in Nenital that was released. Then there was another encroachment in Haldwani itself on the railway land that was released. So sir, that two issues also conflated with this one. And uh, as you said, there were some undercurrents, some concerns about UCC that might have seeped into it. I'm not sure about this though. Uh, so, sir, what happened? Uh, uh, they had said that it, the structure was a Nazul land and, it, and the administration had to get it uh, raised. So, it was said that there were some lapses by the administration because it was said that the LIU report already said that there could be some stone painting, etc. And you should do it in the VRs in the early morning. But what they did, they went in at around 4.35 in the evening and there was no police presence on the rooftops. They should have been because usually pelting happens from the rooftops. 
so there were certain lapses so i think uh, much more could no, have uh, just tell me what is the truth in the news of large areas of uttarakhand especially the bordering area mm -hmm. which borders with china also and so they are being encroached in a big way mm. and they are being settled so what what is this no some so, sir uh, there have been some reports uh, there has been an influx of outsiders into yeah. uttarakhand from neighboring districts of up and since neighboring districts of up they have a certain have greater percentage of a certain uh, religion so sir it has been also conflated into this term what they come call as land jihad or something like that so sir what this issue basically is it is an issue of land regulation it is an issue of uh, bhu kanun so what they are saying that we should stop the influx of outsiders be it from any community uh, and because we have the neighboring districts of up it is majorly muslim so probably that no there is a law on tribal land uh, there is some restriction hmm. on purchase of tribal land hmm. so obviously uttarakhand has more of tribal population so does the law apply there or every area is surveyed in uttarakhand what is the situation so sir uh, there was a very big rally in dehradun so after that the government said that we are stopping the sale of lands to outsider until and unless a report is made and report is studied so what was the condition before that anyone could come into uttarakhand and uh, purchase a land but that land had to be in either in the municipality or nagar panchayat etc they could not purchase an agricultural land in the villages but there were certain loopholes that they could uh, easily so do that so it is a government doing only like they were just not paying attention yes, and sir. now it has built up so yes sir exactly is that correct mm. okay okay thank you what do you think about uh, your uh, the caa uh, do you do you support the caa so i think it was a good step taken by the government why Mm. Okay, so it has been in our civilization culture to give refuge to others as atal bihari vajpayee ji in his poem said ki maine chaati ka logo ke la paale videsh ke shudh sar refuge or do you think they are actually in need of support from india so they do need a support in india as we see what's happening in pakistan and bangladesh with the they just not refugees right sir they have, don't don't you think they have a right to get citizenship rights in india sir i don't think so they do have a right per se um but i think india as a bigger country as a large right to preference i mean not right in the sense automatically they won't get citizenship they are sought to be given preference over certain other people in the cia this is the amendment act don't you think that is justified sir i do think it is justified because you do, you do okay. think because sir, they are being oppressed by those countries sir why do you think west bengal is opposing it sir uh, first of all there are some political considerations political agendas and the second is i think they are more concerned about the influx of bangladeshi migrants into west bengal so that's why how can this result in bangladeshi migrants into they are concerned about it or they want more by bangladeshis to come into west bengal sir uh, they think more hindu bangladeshis will come into hmm. west bengal hmm. is that the problem hmm. so sir there have been some concerns about this and in, in some also they was there afraid of certain muslims in uh, bengal losing their citizenship yes, sir muslims losing their citizenship i think that was more of a miscommunication that happened because csa ca doesn't talk about taking away citizenship it is only about giving citizenship so that was a miscommunication some political agendas so that is why the whole debacle that happened because of the ca so you been part of this vivekananda society so what do you what were the teachings of swami vivekananda sir swami vivekananda ji taught about uh, monism that is the un underlying fundamental unity of every being and every creature on earth then he also talked about nationalism and internationalism that it is better it is it, you have to be first a nationalist to be an internationalist then he also talked about physical prowess that you have to develop your full physical capacity and your full mental capacity then he also talked about raj yoga how to control your mind through yoga and then he was hmm. you mentioned something about monism can you explain what is monism so the monism is the philosophy of advait the non dual philosophy it says that every human being at a very fundamental level is one so like you and me we are sitting here we have this one fundamental unity that binds us all together that is the unity of brahman so it was more about this what is the brahman so brahman is the all pervading omniscient the omni present the omnipotent entity that that governs this whole land 
And when Swami Vivekananda was asked as to whether he has seen God, what did he say? Somebody asked him. So I think Swami Vivekananda, I'm not sure about the exact dialogue, but he must have said that yes, I've seen God. You've seen God? Yes. So there's a quotation, he says that, uh, uh, the ones who are poor, they are the God and people People can call them poor, but I call them God and it is through their service that you will be redeemed. That is a different concept called Daridra Narayana. That is the concept of Daridra Narayana, the Antyodhya, all the concepts, they are all the same. Swami Vivekananda preferred to call uh, that as the Daridra Narayana. He said, I see the Narayana even in that Daridra, in that last person on the line and he is uh, to be supported. That is different from what I am asking you. So when he was in Dakshineshwar Kali Mandir in Kolkata, then he had seen God under the guidance of uh, Paramahans Ramakrishna Ji. How, how do you see God? Through your eyes or through, how do you see God? So through the intellect, through... So you don't see God. Mm. When you see, you see through eyes. But when you experience God, you experience Him through your right. self. Yes. Okay, it's not just seeing. Right. Does God have a form? So the Brahman has taken many forms, so, so we could say is, that. What is the Sanskrit saying about it? Uh, it is said that... Uh, Since you are from Uttarakhand, right. the, the holy area, hmm. so you should know the Sanskrit saying. Sarvam Khalvidam Brahma, this is one, everything is Brahman. Then second is, um, it says that... Uh, Ekam Sat, Ekam sat Vipra Bahudanti. Right. Vipra Bahuda Vadanti. What is the meaning? Means sir uh, that the truth is one, but the parts the parts to reach is are many. Thank you. We'll call you. Thank you.